Joining me now with more is Andrew Thrasher. He's a portfolio manager of Financial Enhancement Group. Uh, Andrew, it's great to have you on the show today. Welcome to NYC TV Live. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. We're so happy to have you. So it's been interesting over the course of these past few weeks. Uh, several markets guests whom I've spoken to have noted expanding market breadth. By how much are the recent gains broadening out and what does this mean? Yeah, it's very encouraging. We spent the good part of the first half of the year really seeing the market driven by the FANG stocks, the MAG7, just the, the handful of biggest companies in the world were really driving the market higher. We weren't seeing a great deal of participation from your typical large cap or really mid or small cap stock. Now, since we've had that uh, kind of a little bit of a pullback in the year, just a handful of points, now as we're hitting new highs, we're starting to see an expansion. We're actually seeing a shift in leadership to where we're seeing equal weight indices hitting new highs, we're starting to see small and mid caps start to perform better. And we start continuing to look at large caps, we're having over 77% of large cap stocks trading above their 200 day moving average. This is just under the 78.7% we had in July. So we are seeing a broadening out, seeing a lot more stocks advance, seeing many more days where we're seeing over 75% of stocks move higher on the day. And the fact that the FANG stocks, or the, the MAG7, if we equally weight them, they're still down roughly 3 4%, 5%, from that July high. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we're seeing other indices breaking out and actually the MAG7 not is encouraging, starting to see a really broadening out yeah. of, uh, of this rally. So I'm curious, obviously, as someone who follows the data and the numbers, uh, what this broadening out means about conviction behind the recent rally. Of course, I know you're probably looking at volumes as well, just to see how active these trades actually are. Yeah, we are concerned with volume, and it's something we do track. Uh, one of the the many charts that we watch is looking at six-month highs on above-average volume, really wanting to see stocks breaking out on above-average volume. And while we came out of the summer months, typically you do see lower volume trading. We're starting to move back in where we are seeing more stocks trade on above-average volume, which, again, is very encouraging. Um, yesterday we had roughly over 20% of stocks hit a 52-week high as we start pulling out of the, uh, the that window, the 10% pullback during September, uh, August, September last year. Now we're really starting to see a lot of the data really improve um, and not seeing as many stocks making 20 day lows. In fact, only 27% of stocks are actually down 20, 10% uh, or more. So we really are seeing a lot more stocks joining this uptrend and we're not less reliant on just mm -hmm. three or four names like Nvidia. So with that, Andrew, does it look like the momentum can continue from here? I think it could. So one of the, the two the biggest concerns that, that I have for the market right now would be momentum and volatility. The first start with momentum. When we do see the market pull back, momentum has seen very shallow dips, very shallow pullbacks. The concern is, is we're not we're still seeing a bearish divergence on the daily and weekly charts for the S&P 500 and, and somewhat for the NASDAQ. What that means is momentum hit higher levels when we previously had new highs. And now after these recent pullbacks, it's not getting to the same level. It's as if you threw a tennis ball in the air and as it begins to slow, tells us when it starts to reverse, uh, reverse and start coming back down to earth. We're seeing somewhat of that in the market right now with these lower highs in momentum. Yeah. Now, this isn't necessarily indicative that we're going to see the market immediately crash or start to turn lower. This can be resolved through a matter of time, but it is a concern. We would like to see more higher highs in momentum than lower highs like we're seeing today. And I want to go back to the volatility that we were talking about, uh, specifically for commodity prices that you've been seeing, where you expect that to go. And then we can talk about volatility, uh, perhaps for stocks as well. Uh, please pick up. Sure. sure. The last comment I would make kind of on oil is even though we're seeing a lot of, of very sensitive reactions to headlines, we're still seeing crude trade from a very technical viewpoint. Let's still hitting that 200 day moving average. We saw a pullback, meaning that it's still very much reliant on price and supply and demand. We're still seeing key levels tested and respected. And so we think that we can still evaluate crude, even though we have all the, the Middle East conflict and all the other inputs, hurricanes and whatnot, it's still respecting price levels. And we think that's still critically important to evaluating crude. So while we're while we still remain bullish, uh, on the energy space, um, we still respect that there's every headline is going to have a daily a daily wiggle on that chart, um, but we still remain intermediately term positive there. Uh, so, in terms of what happens then for stocks, is it mm -hmm. rare that we would see stocks near record highs given the volatility that is out there? 
Yeah, I think there's two key points here. Is one, we have something that a lot of people are probably familiar with. We have a U.S. election coming up. And so we're obviously seeing some price premium into uh, S&P options that are obviously flowing over to the VIX. Um, the actual time period that covers the election falls out of the VIX calculation actually tomorrow with expiration. Um, but I do think we are seeing elevation because of the election, what's going on in the Middle East. But when we back those out and then look historically, this is actually a pretty unusual time. The VIX is around the 30th percentile of its one year range, something you don't typically see when you have equities hitting all time highs. This is something we do. We did see back in January 2027, uh, 2017, I'm sorry, actually it happened right before the COVID crash and then 2014 and, and 2007. It's only really happened 12 different times since 2004, just to show kind of how unique the, the volatility environment is. But I do think we have to put a giant asterisk on it saying, yeah, we've got an election coming. We've got a lot going on in the Middle East that can cause some volatility. We're also in the middle of earnings season, about 20, about 30 percent. Uh, I'm sorry, 37% of stocks report next week. So there's a lot going on in the market that is getting priced into options, um, but it is very unique to see volatility mm -hmm. be this high with the market at new highs. You know, I want to talk about what we're seeing in emerging markets, specifically China, because those stocks had a huge pop. I mean, we're talking about gains of close to 10 percent on some days, but they have lost their luster in recent trading after um, we had seen that stimulus actually announced. And so do you think that there's more deflation in those asset prices ahead or that the stimulus announced out of Beijing can perhaps create some sort of sustained run higher for those Chinese shares? Yeah, that's the big question. So after the big pop, we did see FXI, the Chinese ETF, pull back about 15 percent, um, I believe 5 percent yesterday. I think there's a big expectation when they heard the announcement of the stimulus, a lot of traders said, well, shoot now and aim later in evaluating what's actually being done in China. They've been trying to stimulate their markets for a while, doing things like banning short selling, putting restrictions on certain types of trading, their version of the Federal Reserve, um, their central bank trying to buy up assets. And now they're trying to stimulate things on the economic side. And there was a big expectation that it was actually going to be a larger amount of stimulus than what appears is actually being being done. And so I think that's part of why you're seeing uh, FXI and a lot of the, the, the Chinese equity markets pull back now. Mm -hmm. I, we continue to view emerging markets and specifically China more as shorter term trade opportunities than something we want to buy and hold and close our eyes for several years. We think there's still going to be a lot of volatility in that market as we very much have seen, just a 15% pullback in a handful of days. And so we're still remaining somewhat cautious on those markets. The type of stimulus that China's doing both in their market and economy has not worked in the past as far as stimulating equity growth, what we're most concerned with as U.S. domestic investors. And so we do want to be cautious towards expecting just because they make the announcement that it'll be the same type of market response as we've seen in, in Europe or here in the U.S. when we have stimulus. It hasn't worked in the past. Doesn't mean it won't work in the future, but we need to be leery of uh, of what the type of equity reaction will be. Uh, Andrew, so good to get your take as I see stocks, the major indexes set to open a fractionally higher here at the open. That's Andrew Thrasher, portfolio manager of Financial Enhancement Group. Andrew, thanks. Thank you.